Hi, for this video, we are going to talk about measurement, specifically volume, density, and temperature. Let's have a preview first about measurement. Measurement are expressed in scientific notation, metric systems, or in English systems. And our measurement can be accurate or precise, or both. It depends on, on how we measure things or what tool we use to measure an object. It can also directly measure such as mass, volume, length, time, and temperature. Okay, and it can be derived such as density. Now, this time let's talk about how to measure volume. Volume is the quantity of three-dimensional space enclosed by a closed surface. Let's say we are asked to get the volume of regular solid like a sphere, cylinder, cube. We simply use this formula. Volume is equals to length times width times height. To measure the volume of liquids, we use graduated cylinder. Now, to read the scale correctly, read the volume at the lowest part of the meniscus. It is the curve of the liquid surface in a container. Here's an illustration. As you can see, this is what we call meniscus. Our eye should be level with the meniscus when reading the volume for us to have a correct measurement. Now, know that we have two types of solid, regular and irregular solid. When we say irregular solid, it is still a three-dimensional solid object but does not have a normal shape such as sphere, cube, or pyramid, and they have many sides of differing length. That's why we can't measure them directly. To measure irregular solids, a volume is found by displacement. We begin with a known volume of water. Add the irregular solid and the amount of water displaced is the volume of the solid or the irregular solid. Here's an illustration. Let's say we have a graduated cylinder or a beaker and a water. Based on the illustration, the volume of water is 4 cubic centimeters. Let's use centimeter as unit of measurement for this example and we want to know the volume of this stone as our irregular solid so simply put this stone inside the beaker and the amount of water displaced is the volume of the stone how to solve for that we are going to use this formula V is equals to uh, final volume of water minus initial volume of water. So substitute, final volume is 6 cent cubic centimeters and the initial volume of water is 4 cubic centimeters. So get the difference and we have 2 cubic centimeters as the volume of our stove. Now, let's proceed to temperature. We have three common temperature scales, namely Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. If we are asked to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit is the unknown, we are going to use this formula. And if we are going to ask convert Fahrenheit from Fahrenheit, to Celsius, wherein Celsius is the unknown, we are going to use this formula. And if we are asked to convert from Celsius, degree Celsius, to Kelvin, or Kelvin is the unknown in the problem, we are going to use this formula. We could also derive this formula in case we are asked 
to convert from Kelvin to degree Celsius. So, how to do that? Just simply transpose 273.15 to the left side and don't forget to change the sign. The derivation will be degree Celsius is equal to Kelvin minus 273.15. Take note of this um, new derived formula. Okay, let's have an example. Number one, the average body temperature of a person is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the average body temperature of a person in Kelvin? First things first, we are going to identify what is the unknown in the problem for us to know what formula to use. Since here, Kelvin is unknown, therefore, we are going to use this formula. Copy the formula. We have two ways to solve this problem. First is convert this 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit into Celsius by using this formula. Once you have the value of degrees Celsius, that's the time you can use this formula. But for this problem, I am going to use the shortcut wherein you will just derive a new formula. In our problem, degree Celsius is unknown. For us to get the value of degree Celsius, we need to convert this 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit by using this formula. So let's substitute 5 over 9 times degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 in our equation. So substitute. 5 over 9, copy haran eh. Input here, 5 over 9 plus 27.15. Don't forget to copy this one. Now, after that, substitute the given, which is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Simplify, get the difference. So, that's 5 over 9, 66.6 plus 273.15. Now, 66.6 times 5 divided by 9 plus 273.15. Again, 66.6 times 5 divided by 9, then plus 273.15. The answer is 310.15 Kelvin. So that is our final answer. If you're not comfortable using this process, you can um, have convert this one first into degree Celsius using this formula and then use this formula. It's okay as long as we have the same answer. Let's proceed to example number two. Nitrogen is a liquid around 70 Kelvin. What, what is this temperature in Fahrenheit? Now, first things, first things first, identify the unknown. The unknown is Fahrenheit, so therefore we are going to use this formula. Copy. Now, the same, this problem is somewhat the same in our previous problem. We don't have a formula that we can directly convert Kelvin to Fahrenheit. Wala no Kelvin to Fahrenheit. Therefore, we are going to derive a formula, a new formula. Remember, we have two formula for us to get the value of Celsius. First is converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. The second one is from Kelvin to degree Celsius. And for in this problem, we are going to use the second formula since Kelvin here is given. So let's substitute here. So shade of yellow, shade of yellow. Asa ni gikan, gisubstitute ra nato ang other way for us to solve Celsius. Plus 32. Um, substitute this one. So, 70 minus 273.15. Simplify. 
get the difference. So that is 9 over 5 times negative 203.15 plus 32. Get the product and get the quotient. After that, get the sum. It times negative 203.15 times 9 divided by 5 plus 32. The answer is negative 333.67 degrees Fahrenheit. I guess this is the last example under temperature. Which is colder, 50 degrees Celsius or 110 degrees Fahrenheit? To solve this, it's either convert this degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius or convert this degree Celsius to Fahrenheit for us to compare which is colder. For this process, I am going to make this into or convert this into degree Celsius. Now, since Fahrenheit to Celsius, I, will, I am going to use this formula. Substitute F, which is 110. So we have 5 over 9 times the quantity of 110 minus 32. The difference is 78 multiplied to 5 divided by 9. The result is 43.33 degrees Celsius. Since 50 degrees Celsius is bigger value compared to 43.33 degrees Celsius, therefore, 110 degrees Fahrenheit is colder than 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now this time we are down to the last topic which is density. Density is the mass per unit volume of a substance. It is calculated using the equation density is equals mass over volume or using this formula. The SI derived unit for density is kilogram per cubic meter. This is not a convenient unit in chemistry. So we usually use the units gram per cubic centimeter or gram per milliliter. Every substance has a unique density. For example, the density of gasoline 0.70 gram per cubic centimeters for water 1 gram per cubic centimeters aluminum 2.7 gram per cubic centimeters and lead is 11.35 cubic centimeters so their density is constant and we need to know the density of water for any object that is denser than water will sink in water if it is less dense then it will float in water Let's have an example. A solid ball has a mass of 50 grams and a volume of 20 cubic centimeters. What is the density? So copy the formula, substitute the value of mass as well as the value of volume. We have 50 over 20. Get the quotient, so the final answer or the density of the solid ball is 2.5 grams per cubic centimeters and that is our final answer and that ends our discussion about volume temperature and density